This episode of The Horror Show is brought to you by Luke White, Hardcore Milo, and Larry Kinney. Thank you guys so much. They donated over at patreon.com slash I hate horror. So if you can't support monetarily, that's the place to do it. Today, we are doing Brain Damage from 1988. It's available on Shudder and um, probably also for free on YouTube in like the shittiest quality imaginable. So uh, enjoy Brain Damage. About the misfortune of sending kids to Crystal Lake Became addicted straight away with the initial tape God bless Betamax VHS holy like Amanda Kruger I was introduced to genre flicks by Toby Hooper I started craving more just like Larry the Looter I collected VHS without commentary or bloopers Throw computers, magazines, a bunch of stores Spent my money on movies and begged my mom for more I'd watch the boys kill those astro bastards Five times a day or even more I love the gore Lionel and Paquita combined their lonely hearts I was hellbound, Cenobites tore my soul apart I've seen them all, from Dracula to Vertigo Listen up, welcome to The Horror Show with Sean and Joe Hello everybody and welcome to The Horror Show Show dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers All of your favorite and not so favorite horror movies And other horror related events I'm Sean I'm Joe I gotta pull out my little piece of paper here So I can write down when we fuck up And <clears throat> note the time so I can cut the... <laughs> fucking episode. Oh, I thought you were pulling a Paul in the handwriting your notes this week. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, like, handwritten notes would be fine if you did, like, a page of just jotting down notes and you could do the rest from memory. But can you imagine what Paul did, which was, like, 14 pages of, <laughs> of fucking... Of fucking... Yeah, and, and honestly... Honestly, 14 pages would be fine if you didn't uh, turn them all directly into the microphone. <laughs> like, like flip, flip the page over with your hands directly into the thing. <laughs> oh, that shit is funny. Um, so we are do- Also, if you hear that noise upstairs and it sounds like my house is moving, it, it is because uh, Shay has a step stool that she brings to the, the window. <laughs> And it's the loudest fucking thing I've ever heard, and she just bashes it into my walls, and then she screams when somebody stops her, so. Uh, enjoy that background noise. <laughs> uh, the joy of children. The joy of children. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this week we're doing uh, Brain Damage uh, from 1988. This is Frank Henenlotter's second movie, uh, before he'll go on to star in The Human Centipede 2. As that weird little... I didn't know he's in that. No, he's not. I, I was making a joke because there's that disgusting... Oh, 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 that is a great joke. <laughs> that disgusting fat guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like that. <laughs> he absolutely does. Uh, poor Frank had in love. Yeah, I would love it. <laughs> it's, so, it's too bad we can't help being dicks because I would honestly love to talk to Frank because I think he has like an interesting mind and... <laughs> And he'll be like, oh, let me see what these guys uh, have done. And that's the first the first thing on his episode. Oh, look, he's <laughs> talked about two of my films. <laughs> oh, oh, for an entire, for most of each episode, they talked about how disgusting I look. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think, I think he'd be okay with it. I mean, look at the movies he makes. <laughs> like, that, that is true. <laughs> that's a fair point. Like, come on. Um. So he's made he's made Basket Case one two and three yep. Brain Damage Frankenhooker yeah and then uh, Bad Biology co-directed with R A the Rugged Man, <laughs> which is insane. Have you seen Bad Biology? I have. I have not. Um, did you like this movie? No. <laughs> I, th- I think I think you're okay not seeing it. <laughs> um, people were so I, d- I actually did this for cult. Um, classics, the not cult classics, uh, the cult challenge this cult year. Cult movie challenge, yeah. They did a Frank Henenlotter week, so I chose this. This was a few weeks ago, and I really didn't like it. I really didn't like it, but I wasn't paying full attention, so I was like, well, maybe now that I'm watching it for the show and I have to pay attention 100%, maybe I'll like it more. And I, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
it was still the same fucking it was the same thing it was it was exactly what i remembered <laughs> and i was like oh no <laughs> maybe i did pay so i d- i did like it uh i think his movies much like frankenhooker and, and basket case are you know they're asinine yeah but they also have this like I don't know, charm to it. Because he, he's not making big budget movies. No. He's still telling a story and keeping it horror and like throwing it as a throwback to the B movies of, of yesteryear. Well, okay, so this movie. First of all, I, I still don't understand how he did the special effects for the fucking The Worm. Because it's better than like <laughs> a lot of movies we've seen in any period. <laughs> I, I agree. I, it it honestly is it it freaks me out a little bit how good it is like I'm just like I don't understand why it's so good why I can't and that was a lot of the that was a lot of the criticism when it first came out was it had terrible special effects and I'm like are you are you sure that we're watching the same thing that's that's fucking crazy that thing looks so fucking good I don't understand like there was a part of me that was like. I, I, I was I thought time travel was involved because I just didn't understand how he made that thing look so good. I mean, th- don't get me wrong. There's there's parts where the special effects are fucking ridiculous, but like the guy that gets killed in the bathroom and they just spray ketchup <laughs> like from a ketchup bottle. Uh, I love that scene. Um, oh God, there's this other thing I want to talk about, but I'll, I'll wait till later in the movie. But um, did you happen to when, when the movie? How did you watch it? Did you watch it on the YouTube stream? I did. Yes. Did you let it roll into the next video, which was that weirdo's review of this? <laughs> no, I did not. Dude, you, you have to watch it after. It's so fucking weird. I actually posted it to our Instagram a few weeks ago when I first watched it, and he, he's the guy that like makes those like. Oh, I saw I saw your clips of that. Yeah, where the guy's like, Ooh. like he talks like that the entire video, which is fucking insane. <laughs> like he, that's his voice. It's fucking insane. But but anyway, that guy's this guy this this guy is just a nobody, a nobody reviewer. I mean, I think he's got like. Um, a following on YouTube, but I don't know. Everyone somehow has a following on YouTube that has a channel. Like somehow everyone has at least like 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. It makes no, 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 those people are watching you. It's like Twitter followers. Like it's fucking ridiculous. Like I don't think any of them are watching him, but yeah, he's got like, and he just did Lords of chaos too, which I thought was crazy. <laughs> I'm going to have to check him out. I uh, don't. Cause that guy's fucking. St- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, do it because it's fucking insane, dude. It's, it is. He was like, okay, so there's a there's a scene in this where somebody gets killed in a bathroom stall and you don't see it, but somebody is clearly spraying fake blood out of a ketchup bottle, like in the air, like you can, like it's very clearly what's happening, <laughs> just because it's just like a spiral, like a single stream of spiral of red stuff. And he's like, you'll be surprised to know Henenlotter did this himself. Like, That's not surprising at all. <laughs> but <it's>... what? <laughs> what? Who else would do that? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is straight up the least surprising thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> of course he did. Like, it's fucking stupid. Um, all right. So let's get into this because there's, um, I don't know. This is a weird, this is a weird fucking movie. I, I. Uh, I don't like the story. I like I like Elmer the Worm, kind of. Dude, b- b- first of all, the naming him Elmer. It's not even Elmer. It's spelled A Y L M E R. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, it's Elmer. <laughs> naming him that is funny in itself, and then uh, his voice is fucking next level, dude. <laughs> the voice, and I mean, it's definitely. I imagine it has to be done for comedic value, right? The voice, because it's so fucking funny. It, yeah, t- of, of course it is. It's t- Zachary. <laughs> Zach- Zachary. <laughs> so you have this worm, this horrifying worm monster that's like fucking eating people and uh, and drugging people up, and then he comes out and he's like, "Oh, hello there." <laughs> He's, he's so proper. <laughs> it's my favorite. That That is the my favorite part of the movie. The first time you see him, he's like, oh, hello, Brian. Like, are you fucking kidding me? It, I, it, it might be the uh, the genesis of, like, Stewie from Family Guy. Like, it, it's fucking ridiculous. Like, if I'd seen this, I'd be like, I need to make a character like this immediately. <laughs> yeah, his voice is the best part of this. 
Oh, absolutely, absolutely. He's like, well, what's the matter, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, there wasn't enough Almer <laughs> in the movie. I would agree. <laughs> I would me. agree. I think, I think they needed the sequel uh, where it's just like Almer's big day, and it's just like Almer about town. <laughs> um, and now, so I guess one of the reasons I don't like this is because I think Frankenhooker's good. I love Basket Case, but like I think. I think this was just too much like Basket Case for me. Like, it was just, I don't know. It was just very similar, like this, like, weird parasitic thing. It is similar to Basket Case in, in a sense, but, uh, I mean, it's pretty different enough. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, there's, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, like, Hen and Lauder's sex life must be something else. Like, Think of the weird sex things he's put in his movies. Fucking Belial, fucking a woman. <laughs> and then the... And then this has... The fellatio. This has one of the more infamous... Yeah. <laughs> the fellatio scene in this. It's fucking ridiculous. All right. So <clears throat> we uh, we open up with this uh, this couple in their apartment, this older couple. And they're talking about buying brains to feed uh, Almer. And you don't know who Almer is, but, you know, they're, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a monster because in two seconds they're like, Almer's escaped. And they both just start screaming at the top of their fucking lungs. <laughs> that woman, that woman can scream so fucking loud. It's unbelievable. Like it got annoying. That guy's, that guy's mustache is uh, top notch. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the guy's mustache. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. He's, he's pretty great. <laughs> And dude, you know what I do love about this is so tip in, in many many horror movies you have a scene like this where something disappears and the people are like it's gone and then it will cut to like the main protagonist that finds it right like yeah. and then that's where the story continues. These guys keep showing up. Oh I yeah, I love that till the, till the very end. Yeah, yeah, like they lost something and they're gonna get it back, <laughs> no matter what they need. However. To do. They they are absolutely terrible at uh, retrieving Elmer because they know who has it and they know where he is at all times and they just can't they just can't do it. <laughs> it's, it's totally bizarre. Um, and it's the one thing I'll say about this movie is it's I guess maybe <clears throat> I don't know I, I don't like it but it's not I don't think it's even a bad movie I think the story makes really like there you think that there's going to be holes in certain scenes in the movie like you're like well why did this happen and then later they all kind of get answered like like one of my that, big issues dude, that's ex- oh, what was that sorry go on i was going to say that's exactly what I, I i love the most about his movies is that they're so like on paper they sound so fucking stupid but he manages to tell a legitimately coherent story which so many people failed to do it's to make crazy like and it, yeah like again like people that defend some of the bad movies we do and they're like yeah that's not bad like yeah it if you're complaining about a story like Frank Hanlon <laughs> made a story about an alien dick make perfect sense <laughs> like <laughs> like one of my things was when when the dick escaped <laughs> when Elmer escaped I, which just happened, obviously, uh, and the people are freaking out. I was like, "Well, like, why the fuck would a why would this thing escape?" I, it made no sense, and they make a a story out of it, like it's part of Elmer's backstory. And you're like, "Oh, <laughs> well, fair, fair enough. That works for me." Like, and Elmer, Elmer, pretty much, he has a scene where he where he's allowed to talk to you and tell you exactly what his purpose is, which is amazing. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, so they start screaming because Elmer's missing. Um, he's escaped from the bathtub uh, where I guess he was res- residing. <laughs> um, we meet Brian, who's a guy who's sleeping, and that's that. So the couple is uh, tearing apart, looking for Elmer. Um, I do think they should have had a better system for keeping a monster in their house. <laughs> Besides, uh, other than just letting him sit in a bathtub, yeah, I don't even think that door was closed when the woman walks in. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think the door's open and she walks in and is like, "Oh, ow. Uh, it's pretty good though." Um, and those people are now going door to door trying to find Almer, doing everything they can. 
um, to find him going into people's apartments, checking their bathtubs, checking their bathtubs, <laughs> which is funny because it doesn't appear Elmer really needs a bathtub at any other point in this movie. Uh, so I was actually going to ask you that is that, why is he in the bathtub there when he's in the main character's brain for the yeah. rest of the movie? Yeah, I, I don't know. And then, well, so <clears throat> I don't even know if he's in his brain because I've read that he is more of a leech and hangs out on the outside of his body. That's why he's always like well, crawling. He, but he comes out of his mouth. Yeah, that's true. He, you're right. And he has that hole where he can like uh, inject the stuff. In the, and it does show like the blue stuff going right. into his brain, which, which is what I meant by in his brain. Like, he, you know, he's connected to it. Sure. But like he, he had no he had no point was in water. <laughs> in oh, no. In this movie. And, and and not. But even to your point, though, <laughs> later in the movie, Elmer pops out of Brian's mouth. <laughs> Right, right. So I don't fully understand what what Elmer's doing. I mean, El- Elmer living is his it, belly makes sense, I guess. But is it possible that Elmer was just bathing, <laughs> like just taking a bath? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe there, and, and then, but Brian has dreams of bathtubs and. Later, he'll have one scene where he's in the bath with Elmer and screams as if he's never seen Elmer before, but which I don't understand. <laughs> he lets out a blood curdling scream when he sees Elmer in the bath. He's already been hanging out with Elmer for like three quarters of the movie at that point. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. So the couple's looking for Elmer. They're going door to door. They can't find anything. Um, we meet Brian, who's like, oh, I'm super sick. And we meet Brian's girlfriend um, and also Brian's brother, who is just eye-fucking the shit out of Brian's girlfriend. Like, from the second she shows up, he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> hey, I forget her fucking name. Barbara or or Debbie. Deborah. So he's like, I don't oh. Remember either. He's like, oh, hey, Debbie. No, it, no, it is Barbara. It is, no, it's Debbie. Is it Barbara? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Barbara. Oh, good. I'm just a fucking asshole. Um, I definitely have, because I have Debbie written down in several places, and I think I did take a guess at that <laughs> while I was watching. No, I'm looking I'm looking at the list now. It says Barbara. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. I have it. There's Barbara. There's I wrote it down in two different ways. So, um, so, yeah, she shows up, and, like, the brother is really hot for her, and it's not very, uh, it's not very hidden. And uh, Brian's like, hey, guys, I'm sick. Can you take her to the concert for me? Which is just like the weirdest thing to do anyway. Um, But I guess it's not terrible. But like your brother is like looking at her like he's like (laughs) going to fucking kill her in in a fucking alley on the way to the concert. So I'd probably be like, hey, man, like, why don't you guys just not go to the concert? Or bring one of your friends. Uh, just don't bring my brother. Um, well, we cut to the couple that lost Almer, and they are uh, they're they're uh, they're dying. It appears they've got foam coming out of their mouth. Uh, but we'll learn they're actually just in withdrawal, which is another thing. Like I was watching this, and I was like, "Well, what happened?" Like he doesn't explain it, but we will learn later that um, Almer <laughs> Almer's like brain juice. <laughs> Which I believe is what he calls it, right? Brain juice? That sounds right. I, I think he in a scene he's like, Don't you want my brain juice? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like something Almer would say. <laughs> yeah. Um but they're foaming on the mouth and you think it's curtains. Yeah, them. I thought they were dead, and then they came back and I was like, Oh come on, like we clearly saw them dead. But uh yeah, he, he managed to explain it. <laughs> he does manage to explain it. Um meanwhile in Brian's bed he finds blood all over his hands, all over his bed sheets, and he's got this big old fucking thing on his neck. It's fucking gross. Grossest special effects. Um he's got a weird dream sequence involving water and eyeballs. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what that is. So he goes to the bathroom to look at his neck, but the bathtub's full. So he knows somebody's in the house. Somebody filled the bathtub. Um, 
And he's like, I know someone else is here, so you better come out so I can see you. We see this thing crawling around in his stomach, and then out comes fucking Elmer for the first time. <laughs> and his very first words are, hi. <laughs> And then it cuts to Elmer, who's now in a pail of water, <laughs> talking to Brian. And, and, and he's just like, oh, just put me in that hole in your neck, Brian. Trust me, Brian. <laughs> he's so calming when he talks. It's he, probably, he it literally really, made me laugh all out of the first He time. really is. He's kind of like Varg's voice. Like, <laughs> like, you could just listen to him talk to you. And he's just like, he's like, oh, yeah, Brian, just put me in that hole in your neck. It's fine, man. Like, uh, you'll feel good. I'll take such good care of you. And Brian's like, oh, and also he goes, trust me, Brian, trust me. Don't trust anybody that says that to you. That's f- fucking crazy. <laughs> well, especially a fucking thing that looks like that. <laughs> a fucking alien that's talking to you. Um, although the, the, I will say that voice, very a very trustworthy voice. <laughs> but, but, yeah, that is true. That, but that a very is, untrustworthy true. look. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this thing unhinges its jaws to reveal like all of these teeth, these fucking nasty teeth. And it connects. Great, great scene there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, he had, like this thing comes out of his mouth and it goes into Brian's neck and basically injects. <laughs> it, it, he injects some type of. Uh, uh, chemical into the person's brain uh, causing them to to get high and see lights I guess <laughs> it's not really explained what else happens but they do like it <laughs> they like it a lot yeah he, well he's pretty much uh, sedated so he can control him yeah I mean that's that's truly what it is right it's like a parasitic thing it's like those fucking bugs that like go into animals brains and like drown them yes it's fucking crazy and and as we found out with the other people uh they're gonna go through heavy withdrawals so there's like it's like a barter system yeah Almer need needs them. to eat brains and you in exchange for that he's gonna you know give you your fix fucking it. it's a, it's a, god damn it now i think i like this movie it's such a good idea it's such a good idea it's like a really well thought out kind of an ironclad idea. Like you can't argue that. <laughs> like, yeah, you, it's like an allegory to drug use. Oh, and that's I actually looked up for a, a second, but then no one was. I realized no one was talking about this movie. I just wanted to see if there was anything out there, like any any type of articles or papers that were about like drug use in this movie. I mean, it's pretty overt, but like. I just didn't know if, like, Frank was like, oh, yeah, like, or if he was just like, no, it just seemed pretty funny. <laughs> it, it's honestly probably the latter, but, yeah. but you can make the case. You can make the case for him. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think I think he was like, oh, I don't know. It seemed funny to me. It seemed funny when I fucking wrote it. <laughs> um, so him and Elmer are now uh, uh, buddies. Uh, the brother... While this is going on, is still making the moves on that 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 uh the, the girlfriend, and they're they're like, why is Brian acting so weird? And it cuts to Brian who is running around acting like the biggest fucking weirdo on earth, and being like, the lights, the lights, and he finds a junkyard, gets excited because he's seeing all these lights everywhere, and um, unfortunately, he gets caught by this security guard who's an armed security guard which is terrifying uh and he frisks brian he's frisking his belly and he's like what the hell is that and the worm jumps out and fucking elmer jumps out and plunges himself through his fucking skull uh the way the guy says what the fuck is that is hilarious that guy might be my favorite character in the movie after (laughs) elmer (laughs) <laughs> the security guard uh <laughs> yeah dude he he conveys that line that, that guy might have legitimately been surprised that this was about to happen in this movie dude no the best actor i mean well again we i don't think we have to say this anymore the the best character outside of almer is uh that guy fucking zorro <laughs> <laughs> from uh frankenhooker 
Yes. That guy has a shower scene in this movie. <laughs> again, well, I don't know what this takes place in New York City. I've never seen more polite people in my life. This is the least New York City movie I've ever seen. He, <laughs> there's a shower scene where fucking Brian walks in, acting like a total weirdo, uh, looking like a zombie, and Zoro's like, "Hey, man, it's okay. Like, no one's gonna judge you." <laughs> Imagine anyone in New York City being that kind to you, <laughs> like. Never, never. <laughs> they would honestly. While you're showering. Yeah, while you're. Dude, Zoro's butt ass naked, and this guy's just like. He looks like he's gonna fucking kill him. And like, Zoro's like, hey man, just chill out. It's all good. <laughs> Zoro would beat the shit out of that guy so fast. And especially, especially in the 80s. Oh, 100%. Um. But we'll get to that. Uh, the oh, Frank Frank does. He loves uh, having people from his other movies, you know, all come back or all be intertwined. Because I think they're just his friends, to be honest with you. Because <laughs> uh, Kevin from from Basket Case is in this movie too. Yeah, yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne, and, and as the character, right? He's holding the basket. Oh, God, it's awesome. I, I want to. Intertw- He's intertwining his own universe. It's so crazy. That scene I actually really liked. Although it looked like it looked like Dwayne was wearing a weird ass wig. <laughs> like he looked, he I'd looked like re- he looked like. Um, I mean, Dwayne's Dwayne's hair in general is disgusting. Yeah, I mean that's true. But he looked like Joe. Lat- what's that guy's name? Latruglia <laughs> from Brooklyn Nine Nine. I, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He looked like that guy wearing like a giant mullet wig. It was it was really fucking weird. It, it didn't it did not look right to me. But you know whatever that that was cool. Um, I, I want to talk to you so bad about this thing I read, but I can't spoil anything. Um, but it's about um, Stan Lee's cameo and Miss Miss uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah, oh, fantastic. Wait, you saw Captain Marvel? Um, no, I haven't seen it yet, but I read about that cameo. And I read about it because people were like, it ruins the fucking... <laughs> it ruins the fucking... Uh, they, were so, <laughs> they were so fucking dumb. People are so fucking crazy. Uh, it ruins, like, the time... The I, I don't even know. the uh, What do they call it? That fucking shit that people cry about now? Canon. The canon. Like, they're like, it ruins the fucking canon of the time. <laughs> What? How? <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna mark this down to edit it. This so is we so just, much more uh, fun than talking about brain damage. <laughs> we, we just ran, we just ranted about. Uh, we went from <laughs> Captain Marvel to uh, internet fan culture to like politics. <laughs> so we did about ten minutes on that. So we're gonna take that out of your show, and you're not gonna get it back. So. Hopefully. This, no, you're definitely going to not get it back. I'm not, do, <laughs> I'm not doing an extra 10 minutes for these people. <laughs> I think people... Oh, oh, I thought you meant... I, no, no, I don't, I don't give a shit about that. I mean, hopefully you cut it out. You remember to cut oh, it out. Oh, I'll cut it out. I wrote it down. It's a big star on it. I can't leave that. <laughs> I mean, I could. It would be funny, but... Um, I wouldn't give a shit. But, you know, I, think, people I, think people, I think people think I'm a jerk now, which makes me laugh. Um, Why? Uh, you know, people are just people. Sometimes I say things and like, I, I don't know why anyone would take anything I say seriously. Like, like listen to what we talk about on the show. I, I don't. <laughs> Wait, give me an example. What, what have you said recently that you got? Uh, I don't, I don't want to say, <laughs> I don't want to say exactly, but I just get messages sometimes that are like, Hey man, like that wasn't cool. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> And I'm just, you know, I just have to like kind of, you know, it's whatever. It's whatever. People, people, you know, people are sensitive, Joe. I, I'm very well aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> but like half the shit I say, I don't believe like if you, I start out the movie being like this movie fucking sucks. And then at the end, I'm like, I like this movie a lot. This movie's pretty fucking great. So I don't know why you take yeah, that. Like, like case in point, this this movie right here. Yeah, yes. I feel like you're warming up to it. Oh, I definitely am. I mean, just doing Almer's voice is putting me in a better mood. Um, so I don't. So even when know. those people uh, D, when those people DM you, just uh, read it without Almer's voice. 
<laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, where are we? Um, we were at the junkyard, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so Elmer goes into his brain and eats his fucking brain. Now, this is why uh, this is why they had to feed him brains at the beginning of the movie. And again, the special effects on the worm are just like, I don't even understand how they're so fucking good. It just doesn't even make sense. Like, so yeah. fucking weird. Well, I mean, think about Belial. Like, how is he doing that? Okay. Not, he doesn't have a lot of money. You know what? Belial, I mean, despite it just being a massive plastic, uh, the fact that he was looking back, like the fact that he was able to make the arms and shit move is unbelievable. Like, we couldn't do that. Like, there's no way. No, and then you look at movies like Elf. Or elves, whatever it was called, uh, <laughs> and they just they just stuck something there, like it was immobile. A fucking statue. And and and, and that thing you could have easily made. Like the claymation's a, a real thing that you could have just like you know spliced together and made it look somewhat alive. They just stuck it there. So like f- this guy does a good job with all that shit. Yeah, I mean this uh, Almer is uh, honestly like unbelievable. I I kind of do want to talk to him now about it. I just want to love to talk to him. I just want to. I seen him at a, at, at Chiller Theater, <laughs> and I he, did not talk to him. <laughs> uh, chill, Chiller. Um, he probably lives up in this area, huh? All of his movies always take place in New York City. Oh yeah, he's got to be from New York. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So they kill the security guard. Um, and. Brian's seeing the colors, which is fucking bonkers. We get to see it for a second. Just, it's really just a bunch of colors everywhere. And Brian is 100% hooked because he's like, hey, man, you need to give me more of that juice. And fucking Elmer's like, no, no, Brian. <laughs> and 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 it's it's really kind of a cool, I, I, the scene is actually kind of cool just because like Almer is playing a game with Brian where Almer's like, no, no, no. And Brian's like, no, come on, just a little. And then he's like, oh, okay, just a little. Like, but clearly, like, he wants to give Brian the shit so he can keep using Brian as his yeah, tool. He wants him to be more and more addicted to it yeah. and fucking fiend for it so he will do what he wants. A little reverse psychology. I, like you already said, I, I like it a lot. A little reverse psychology by Zachary there. Um, yeah, Barbara then shows up to the house, um, and the brother's like, <laughs> which I, I don't, they never showed this in the movie, but the brother's like, man, he just sits in the bathroom for like hours on it, <laughs> which you don't ever see. Um, and he's like, and look, he installed all of these locks on his bedroom door and the bathroom door, and like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And that's the scene where they like knock on the door, and Brian's like, hello, and he's in the bathtub, and then he sees Almer, and he's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get it because he's just been hanging out with Elmer this entire time. Um, so yeah, so it's it's whatever. Uh, but ultimately, uh, Barbara had showed up to go on a date, so they go on their date, and Brian is trying to explain <laughs> is trying to explain like the colors he's seeing now, and I, I, I don't know why he thinks this is something to be discussed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know either. He's like, man, nobody's gonna fuck. He's you. like, man, I just see colors everywhere. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> and Barbara's like, hey, man, you're, you're fucked up. Uh, and Brian has this <laughs> insane meltdown where he, they're eating spaghetti, and he looks down, and the meatballs turn into fucking these breathing brains, <laughs> like brains that are like. <sighs> And it honestly made me want to be fucking sick. I wanted to be fucking sick during it. Like, it was so fucking vile. <laughs> Dude, I felt nauseous at that, and there's a scene involving pulling something out of an ear. Oh, my it, God. It literally made my, it made my stomach turn. <laughs> it was so fucking gross. Um, that's so that's so insane. Uh, he leaves. Um, we watch him walking home. He meets a homeless guy who's crying, which I don't, I don't think that even plays into anything, but... Um, just to make you feel better. Yeah, it's just like, depressed. hey, just a reminder, <laughs> homelessness is a real plague in our society. <laughs> and there's people that don't have homes and cry about it every night. <laughs> it's fucking 
Chilling. Um, well, then Brian finds a club called Hell, which he decides to go into. And he starts dancing like that fucking idiot. What's that guy's name? Clowny Clown Clown. Yes. What's that? Uh, Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover. <laughs> He's doing like the Crispin Glover dance at this club. That's the name of that song he did, right? Clowny Clown Clown. Oh, I, yeah, it most definitely is. <laughs> that guy should be fucking He's arrested. He's such an asshole. That guy should be He's arrested. such an asshole. <laughs> When when Amato told me about the clowny clown clown video, I was like, this sounds like one of Amato's made up ones. Like, because there's just no way a, a, an adult film, like not an adult film star, but an adult man who is uh, kind of famous uh, w- would make a music video called clowny clown clown <laughs> and dance around in the Didn't streets. Wanna- one of my biggest regrets in life was not following through on my idea to write a novelty rap song like Do the Pee Wee Herman, but call it Do the Crispin Glover, and then just have a motto go to crowded places and start dancing like he dances Friday the 13th. If we had the budget, I, w- I would have wanted to do that in a fucking second. It's so fucking funny. It's like Do the Bart Man. <laughs> Like all the yeah, yeah, but and then just, and then just have Amato, who's like tall and skinny enough, just like Crispin Glover, yeah, <laughs> to do that dance in front of people. <laughs> well, like I, I would honestly want Amato to learn it. I ident- like I I would ma- and if there's anybody yeah, that could, do and he it, would nail it. Yeah, he'd be perfect for yeah. it. Yeah, if anybody could do it, like remember those insane movements, it would be him. And I'd be like, how how do you remember that? <laughs> He's got the most insane memory, but yeah, he could definitely do it. And he'll probably like send us a video like 30 minutes after this episode's released of him doing after this episode of him of him doing it at the mall. (laughs) (laughs) Like 30 minutes after it's released, we'll get the video. (laughs) Um (laughs) he is an enigma, man. Um so Brian starts making out with this uh like (laughs) I don't know punk rock girl uh but she she's uh she's pretty quick she's uh she's uh she makes the moves Morning. on him she, she makes the moves on him pretty quickly uh she takes him outside where they st- she takes him outside to like an abandoned chemical factory which i don't i don't quite understand um and sh- she starts feeling his dick and she's like oh you got a real monster in there <laughs> she, great line great great fucking line. Great, great line she unzips his fly and almer comes flying out into her mouth <laughs> well she's about she's about to give him head she doesn't just like unzip it and he jumps out like she's about to suck his dick and then he comes through yeah and and, <laughs> and you know uh that's just <laughs> Then Brian, so she's on her knees uh, doing this, and like now Almer's in her mouth, going to go eat her brain. But Brian, the way Brian holds her head <laughs> in such a way that it just looks like she's b- blowing Almer. <laughs> right? Yeah, the, the, that's the entire point of that scene. And they hold and it's fucking funny. <laughs> they hold on this scene for so long, like they cut away. To like show it from different angles <laughs> and from the side profile like multiple times just to make sure you understand what's happening. <laughs> um, and then she she's dead. Uh, I feel like he I feel like he almost wrote this movie because he thought of this idea like, hey, that would be funny if uh, somebody was blowing someone in a monster eater. Joe. Then, like he just wrote the movie around that because like this was like the main scene he wanted to hammer home. I couldn't agree with you fucking more. I think I think this movie was built around this scene because there's no like the, this scene had to be like the like I want to make a movie where, where a girl sucks a monster thinking it's a dick and the monster eats her fucking brain. <laughs> Because there's just no other way. And you know what? Honestly, it, that might be the case for Belial also. There might be a case where the, he was like, you know what? I want to see a movie where like uh, <laughs> like uh, one of those like, what do they call it? Like the, the Siamese twins or whatever it is. Like, I don't know what you call it. Conjoined. Like, I want to see a movie where a conjoined twin <laughs> mutates and fucks a woman. <laughs> And then he built a movie around it because it just seems like too weird to get these scenes in movies. Um, Well, Brian kind of 
Oh, also, oh yeah. So after that scene, the the older couple shows up again and he tells us the entire history of Almer. And he's like, like (laughs) Almer's been around forever, like since the dawn of time. And (laughs) this guy, no, this guy recites from memory every, every previous owner of Almer's. (laughs) It's like, yeah, then the Vikings brought him over. <laughs> um, and he, he explains how Almer's been passed around. And he's like, give me Almer. And he's basically subdued by just being like put, pushed over by Brian. <laughs> yeah, just being, just being old. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> but Brian finds his uh, bloody underwear after this scene and is like, what the heck? <laughs> and uh, he confronts Almer about it. And Brian's like, what is happening? I, I wake up and I don't remember what's going on. And I feel like you might be like, no shit, Brian. Of course he's involved. Like you fucking parasitic worm that you keep attaching to your neck. <laughs> like, Regardless of how weird it is that there's blood in your underwear. Like, of course he's somehow involved in it. Like fucking kidding me. Um, and then <laughs> fucking Elmer. Is just like, well, no, 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 you're you're crazy. And Brian's like, I don't think I am. And then Elmer's like, okay, well, time to spill the beans. <laughs> <laughs> and then just explains everything. He's like, well, uh, I'm using you to uh, eat these people's brains, and we we killed a, a security guard and a, and a. I think they call her a prostitute, but I don't think that's what she was. Um, and he's like, and a prostitute, and uh, yeah, you're just gonna keep bringing me to people, and we're gonna keep eating, <laughs> eating them. <laughs> Um, and they have a standoff where Brian's like, I'm done. I don't need to get high anymore. And, and, and Almer's like, all right, Brian, let's give it a shot. <laughs> like, let's see how long you last. And, uh, we watch Brian go through all these withdrawals and he's trying to fend it off. And next thing we know, he wakes up and he's getting covered in blood and he pulls like 20 feet. This scene is so fucking so gross. gross. This it's scene, so gross. This scene is so. Fu- he's like picking at shit in his ear. Like he's like, "What the fuck is that?" And then he pulls like twenty feet of what. Like the best way to describe it is like the shit you pull out of your shower when you're when you have a a, a wife yes, that has a long hair. Clog, yeah. yeah, like a drain clog. Like fucking, but it's like twenty feet. It's never ending. It's fucking disgusting. It was fucking disgusting. And then on top of it, his fucking ear falls off. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking fucking Almer's like, uh oh, Brian, now you're really losing your mind. <laughs> and it's it was all a hallucination. It's all part of the uh, withdrawals from uh, Almer's brain juice. So that, that didn't actually happen. But a fucking vile scene. It, great scene. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's stomach turning. And, and probably one of my other favorite scenes is. So Brian like comes to and is like, oh, what the fuck? And then imagine going through withdrawals and then all of a sudden Almer starts singing for like 20 fucking straight hours. <laughs> Al- Elmer the Worm just starts singing. I-, I don't even remember what song he's singing. He's just like, oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, and then next thing we know, Brian is has uh Brian's given up. And he's with Almer again, and they go they go to the gym locker room where they meet Zorro from Frank and Hooker, who's just f- fucking jacked to the gills. Huge. Absolutely huge. Absolutely enormous. Could kill anybody. And in walks fucking Brian, who looks like a fucking serial killer and is not talking and is just staring at him. And again, like I said earlier, like Zorro's like, hey, man, it's OK. Like, no one's going to judge you here. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> nicest human being on earth <laughs> and even when he gets a little bit annoyed he's like hey man are you all right like he's more concerned for him than, than like angry <laughs> i know oh boy and then he's like well it's all yours man so zoro doesn't really play a part which is f- fine but elmer had di- elmer slid out from under the towel so you think he's gonna get zoro but zoro leaves <laughs> instead elmer takes that low-hanging fruit and attacks this guy <laughs> in a fucking toilet, like in a toilet stall. And the guy's just, 
what is that guy yelling about? He's in the to- he's in the bathroom. Oh fuck! What is he fucking crying? He's he's saying something in the bathroom. He's like bitching about something. But then Almer <laughs> shows up and it just fucking eats his brain. And he's just like, ah. <laughs> Oh man, it's fucking great! It's fucking amazing. Uh, Wait, can you can you hear me? My, my mic was like cutting out there. Yeah, I can hear you. I think. Okay. Good. Um. Yeah, the worm. Uh, yeah. So that guy's dead, and that's when we get the ketchup bottle spraying scene. Um. Back at <laughs> can home. Can you believe he did that himself? <laughs> <laughs> can you believe? Can you believe Frank Hennelock? And especially when you look at, of course, Frank Hennelock did. What the fuck? There's like three people in the fucking movie. Um, Brian's brother, though, putting serious moves on Debbie, um, including calling her a very special lady and giving her like the most awkward bear hug from behind of all time. Um, <laughs> they start making out and then ultimately having sex. <laughs> like, yes. Uh, and then fun fact, Brian is in that room. <laughs> Brian is in the house listening to this. <laughs> Listening to his brother have sex with his girlfriend. Well, I mean, he's been neglecting them both the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just sitting there listening. And finally, the worm. It, this is such a long sex scene, too. We, like, we just sit there and have to watch Brian listening to this for so long. And finally, fucking Almer shows up to 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 break this up. And he's like, you, Brian. <laughs> And he attaches to Brian's neck again, uh, where which causes him to dream of having a threesome with his brother, and then it's so weird. Then f- fucking his girlfriend and eating her brains, <laughs> <laughs> which is that that was so oh, Frank. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> he comes to though he he walks out, finds his brother and his girlfriend sleeping together, and they're both like, "Oh God, Brian." <laughs> <laughs> fucking kidding me um brian's like you gotta leave because I, I i'm gonna end up killing you all and they're like hey man take it easy Be, being do, doing something like that behind his back at his house and then being surprised that he's there is so unbelievable <laughs> they lived to, at least like check his fucking room they're like oh god we thought you were out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or just you know i mean first of all just not do that or you know get a hotel or something and they're doing it in on like the futon in the living room. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're surprised, and then they're even more surprised when when Brian's like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you," but he's not even saying it out of anger. And they're like, "Hey, man, like you don't have to be angry about this." <laughs> no, he's gonna do it because he needs to. <laughs> oh man, it's so fucking great. Um, so Brian runs away. Basically, he's trying to avoid everyone. He's telling people to stay away from him. But Debbie does, or uh, Barbara does not listen. She follows him to the subway. Debbie, uh, <laughs> she, I haven't written as Debbie the rest of this, so I'm definitely going to continue <laughs> saying it. Uh, this, is, this is not the first time you've done. This. <laughs> it's a common theme in the show. Um, and she's like, she's like, hey man, I realize we have some problems with our relationship, Barbara. You just fuck, <laughs> you just fucked his brother, like. <laughs> You have more than problems. Like the relationship's done. Um, and they're on the subway talking and Brian is kind of just a zombie, just not paying attention. And uh, Dwayne from Basket Case sits down on the subway across from them and they have this weird and he's got the basket. He's carrying the basket. Yes, he's carrying Belial. And they're staring at each other and... Uh, Dwayne sees Elmer pop out of uh, Brian's mouth for like a split second and scares him away. <laughs> but that is awesome. That that shit that shit needs to happen more often. Yeah, he created his own universe. And he connected it all. I love it, dude. They, they need to do that. I I, I want to see more. I want to see more of that. And not like don't overthink it. Just fucking put it in. That that's what made me get on that Captain Marvel thing because it's just like. Just plug it in. Like, it just makes everyone be like, that's awesome. And it makes, like, 13 yep. people on Twitter be like, but if you look at Basket Case, <laughs> Dwayne says he doesn't like taking the subway. <laughs> <laughs> Worrying about the timeline. 
Get the yeah. fuck out of here. <laughs> oh fuck. It's so fucking weird. Like honestly, just go get a go get a different hobby. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Or Stop any watching. or any hobby or do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the biggest problem. I think people are just doing too little. Like, go go out to a restaurant. <laughs> Don't worry about the timeline to basket case. <laughs> go do something cool. There's so many cool things to do. Um, <laughs> it's so crazy. Like, and think about the think about the directors of these movies. That like obviously like the Marvel movies. You're probably not going to run into any of them anytime soon. But like Frank Henenlotter's at these cons, and think about the people that go up to him and are like. So, <laughs> when Dwayne's on the subway, where does that fall in line with the movie? He's probably like, I, I, who gives a shit? <laughs> I can't. I can't wait for somebody to email you and be like, "Hey, man, I don't have hobbies." <laughs> <laughs> they will. That's the upsetting part. They will, and I'll. I'll <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is you just probably shouldn't worry too much. You shouldn't stress out about about the basket case timeline is all I'm trying to say. Or any timeline in a movie for that matter. You're correct. I'm with you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so um, they're on this train. Uh, Dwayne leaves. Bro, old, uh, old Barbara goes to lay a big one on uh, Brian. They start kissing, but... It was all ploy. Almer eats her fucking brains on the subway. There's a woman on the subway, too, that sees them making out and is like, oh, lady, I have watched a man masturbate on an, on a New York City subway. Pull out his fucking dick and masturbate on a subway I was on. If you saw people making out as the lead, you'd be like, thank God. Like, fuck. Like, Thank fucking God, because I, there's nothing good. Nothing good comes from those subways. It was fucking horrifying. It, it took like three stops before finally the police came and took, took him off. Yeah, it always does. I showed you the video of that guy just wiping his ass on the subway. It's oh. like letting it letting it pile up on the seat next to him. I fucking hate the subway. <laughs> It's so crazy. One time, recently I was in New York City with somebody, and I was like, God, it's so fucking disgusting. Like, just the, the rails, like the trash on the rails. Yeah. Like, it's fucking horrifying. Like, it's just fucking disgusting. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's a big, uh, there's a big uh, campaign to really clean these up now. And I was like, they're doing a fucking terrible yeah, okay. job. They're doing a fucking yeah. t- F minus fucking job at it because this looks like a fucking landfill that a train fucking goes over. <laughs> also, uh, our friend Alien Space Bats took took exception to us complaining about <laughs> saying that there were no trees in New York City. Space Bats, what are you? What? <laughs> Dude, I pulled up the, the New York City tree census and they have like a total of like fifty thousand trees. And I took a picture from my yeah. my work window in an industrial parkway. There's like fifty thousand trees in I dis in like uh, within like the, the visual like from my window. Just yeah. taking a picture. Yeah, my back my backyard I share with a neighbor, and I might have that many trees. <laughs> Fucking the, all fifty thousand of those trees are in Central Park. <laughs> Kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> she was upset. She was upset. She she wanted walking, walking down. <laughs> she's a fucking ass walking down Houston Street. I've never been like, damn, look at all these trees. <laughs> she her one of her arguments was uh, she was like, there's at least one tree a block. I was like, that's not impressive. I don't even, I, dude. I don't even believe that to be true. <laughs> well, I, I, I've I've walked fucking hours down blocks. I don't recall ever seeing a tree. I've seen piles of shit, both literally and figuratively. I've never seen a tree. I'm, I'm, dude, I'm honestly rocking my brain, like thinking of like all the subway stops I've gotten off of and walking. Like I've never, maybe, maybe like one of those little shitty sidewalk, like those little trees that you 
I don't even know what you call them, but you can barely even classify those as trees. <laughs> and I don't plant. even recall seeing them. I, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like those little, like, yeah. like, like, like an office tree, like something you bring into your <laughs> office that they just put there to try and like mask the piles of shit that you're about to walk by. <laughs> but like, th those aren't even real fucking trees. And, I, and even then, I don't even really recall seeing those. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna fucking throw it. That's so funny. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> there's there's some neighborhoods in Brooklyn that have <laughs> a handful of trees, <laughs> but again, <laughs> fine, fine. But the, the, that's whatever. Like you can't say New York New York City is the biggest planet, the biggest one of the biggest cities on the planet. <laughs> Fifty thousand trees is nothing. You can walk miles without seeing a tree. That's the point. For fuck's sake. Oh man, it's so funny. <laughs> Uh, I hope she's not mad about this. Uh, sorry, Space Bats, but <clears throat> there's no trees in New York City. I'm not. There's not fucking trees in New York City. You can't take acceptance to that. Uh, so Barbara's dead. Also, why would you take exception to that? I just was like, there's no trees in Meriden. I don't give a shit if you believe that. Are you kidding me? I'm not an arborist. Neither is she. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap up this movie. <laughs> oh, that is fucking funny. <laughs> I'm not an arbor. <laughs> Imagine all the arborist emails I'm gonna get. Like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm an arborist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, all the emails from trees. Hey, <laughs> you should care about us, even if you're not an arborist. Uh, that's basically what my emails have become at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking maddening. Uh, that's why we're just going to start reviewing whatever movies we want. Um, Oh man, people love Lords of Chaos too, huh? Like that was crazy. Like, I, I saw, yeah. That was um Glad that was pretty that. cool. And there was a lot of people that were like, Well, it's not the but like um most people still liked it. So I think um I think we should move into the uh the cult realm. I think yeah. that I think that would be fun. Um because that was that I think was it's our show, so we can do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, I know. And also the uh that that episode was a little more um I realize we haven't really talked like academically about any 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 films in a while. We used to do that occasionally, and we did that kind of with Lords of Chaos. Yeah, like it wasn't just yeah dick jokes. It was like there was some information in it. Um, so I think people kind of like that. So, but you're not going to get that. So deal with that. You're gonna have, you have to deal with that. That's just gonna be a that's just gonna be a no go there. Um, anyway, Brian, Brian's killed Barbara. Um, and I don't even know how, how this even transpires, but he's walking home. The, the couple is back. The old lady somehow steals Almer from Brian. Um, and for some reason she thinks this is going to go well, even though almer has been like, I fucking hate them. They made me eat cat brains instead of human brains. And, <laughs> and, and I fucking hate their guts. And that's why I ran away. And then this woman's like, oh, Elmer, I'm so happy to see you. Uh, so, of course, Elmer eats her fucking brain in a pretty gruesome scene. Uh, the old guy tries to remove it. Elmer eats him also. <laughs> I don't understand. The worm, uh, Elmer jumps back on Brian to, like, attach to his neck. Yes. The old guy manages to get up and squeeze the shit out of Elmer. I I actually love this because he squeezes Elmer, which then shoots an overdose into Brian's brain. It's so fucking, such a fucking cool idea. And you see Brian's brain, like those shots we didn't even talk about, like the shots from within Brian's skull of his brain. And they made sure to make it a point to show how much juice was like being shot in. And it was always like this very small amount, like just a little bit of this blue juice that caused the the high in Brian's brain. We see it after this guy squeezes it and it's just covered in in blue juice. Like it's just a total you can 
you know exactly what happened. He's been overloaded, overdosed with this this blue juice, this brain juice. And um, also, <laughs> he kills Almer uh, so quickly. <laughs> yeah, that was all it took this entire time. You just squeeze Almer. Just squeeze Almer, and Almer's like, Bleh! which probably is <laughs> probably also the same way you could have killed uh, <laughs> Zachary. <laughs> Frail little Zachary. I feel like he'd die the same way if you just squeezed him a little bit. He would have just been like, Bleh. he is dead though, right? <laughs> Rest in peace, Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't squeezed to death. I don't think. <laughs> Uh, Brian, uh, you know, Brian's brain starts exploding with slime. Um, he, this like lump appears on his head and it's like a pulsating horn type of thing. I, I, I didn't know if it was like another Almer that was being born or what, or what it was. Um, but it's like this pulsating thing. He runs home. It's even. No, I just think I, I just think it was a side effect of the overdose. The overdose, and this thing is like sprouting. Yeah. Brian pulls out a gun. <laughs> uh, and we cut to outside where there's like I don't know, like an abundance of police officers for some reason, and. I mean, for some reason. Well, like, why are they there? Oh, so, I guess there's been a lot. So much. So many people dying. <laughs> Okay, okay, fair, fair is fair, fair is fair. <laughs> uh, so the police officers are there clearly to investigate a crime. <laughs> um, and they're all outside and they hear a gunshot go off. And then a, a laser light show coming from Brian's apartment window. And the yeah. police run in. <laughs> and Brian's standing there and his head is... He has no top of his head. His skull is gone. The top of his skull is gone. But a giant light is coming out of the opening of his skull. Just like, it's like a giant spotlight. <laughs> Which honestly, again, a pretty good effect. Agreed. Agreed. If you, if you asked me to do that, I there's no way I could make that look like that. <laughs> um, and that's the end. <laughs> That is the end. And uh, setting up a sequel, which will never be made. <laughs> what a shame. What a shame. I, I like it a lot more now. I do, li- I do like it a lot yeah. more. Yeah. No, it's, it's good. Um, it, it's, it's something. It's, not, it's definitely not my favorite. The weird, it's, there's parts of the story I don't love, but it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I would definitely check it out. It's on Shudder for free, or, or if you have Shudder, it's on Shudder. And it's uh, also on YouTube. The quality on YouTube is fucking dog shit but um <laughs> that there's actually a really good quality print that's out there um that i would definitely suggest looking because it looks amazing <clears throat> um so i would definitely check that out all right we got to pick a movie for next week um do we want our choices oh we got a bunch um <clears throat> We have so much shit. Um, so many picks. Oh my god. Uh, we got uh, uh, a video of violence, uh, which is uh, like a sh- SOV shot on video movie. <laughs> looks fucking. Oh good. Looks fucking abysmal. I actually own both of them. Shot. <laughs> uh, there's two of them. Video violence one and two. <laughs> um, making contact, which I've never heard of yeah i have not either uh 1985 though that's always a good sign invasion of the b girls <laughs> hillside okay. Hill, so, hillside cannibal so far you're not wowing me <laughs> hillside, Can- hillside cannibal hillside cannibals is a mockbuster, so it, it's like it's from 2006 so i think it's i think it's like uh it's like a fake version of the hills have eyes Okay. This fan, he picked all mockbusters, and I'm like excited for all of them. Bloody Murder from 2000. I don't know which one that is. Halloween Night 2006, which is Halloween, <laughs> and Hillside Cannibals, which was 2006, which is The Hills Have Eyes. Um, Vampire in Brooklyn, we got. 
But let's do it. Let's do a Vampire in Brooklyn. All right. We I think we were supposed to do that earlier. So yeah, let's do Vampire in Brooklyn. I'm excited about that. <laughs> okay. Who, who's in that? Is that um? Who's the star of that? Come on, bro. What? You know? Is it Eddie Murphy? You know? Who do you think's? Who do you think's the star? Yes. It's Eddie Murphy. Yes. And it's directed by Wes Craven. It is. That's what I thought, but yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't remember. Because, like, this was like, this is like, <laughs> Wes Craven and John Carpenter got together and they were like, we want to do a couple shitty vampire movies. <laughs> and Wes Craven did Vampire This is Brooklyn. the era, yeah. Vamp- Wes Craven did Vampire in Brooklyn and John Carpenter did, was it, like, Vampires on Mars? <laughs> it's Vampires. No, it's just oh, Vampires. Oh. oh, wait, what's the Mars one that he did? Uh, Ghosts of Mars with Ice Cube. I, I combined the two. <laughs> Vampires on Mars. That that is a movie <laughs> I would like to see. <laughs> All right. So next week, Vampire in Brooklyn. Uh, so join us for that. Uh, we're on Facebook.com slash I Hate Horror, I Hate Horror.com, and Instagram at I Hate Horror. Joe, tell us where we can find you and where we can find Joe's fantastic music podcast that everyone is. Uh- yeah, the link will be on my Instagram, and my Instagram is Brugdish1985. Still working out details of uh, joining a network. Whoa, hello. Hey, now. Hey, now. Yeah. That's fun. That's exciting. Um, anyway, that's it, uh, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening, whatever. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> for, for Joe, <laughs> this is Sean. Stay with Thank you. Adios. I'm gonna watch what I'm not supposed to watch. Dismember. Fucking zombie getting sliced and diced. A monster. Mutilate. 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 Mutil